Welcome to Café Rollist, a Café Rollist dedicated to crossing borders and languages. And today, we are joined by Thomas Munier from France. Uh, hello, Thomas. Could you introduce yourself hello. to our viewers? Okay, so um, uh, I am a, I'm a French uh, author. Uh, I live in, uh, in Brittany, in France. And uh, I made about... Uh, 30 or 40 uh, RPG uh, ranking from uh, uh, nano games, um, OSR, uh, and uh, story games. Uh, I wrote uh, both um, GM full games and uh, GM less games. And many of them uh, are taking place uh, in the Miles Vales uh, universe. Uh, Miles Vales, uh, it is uh, our world. A few uh, centuries later, and the, the world is in ruin, and the forest uh, has all invaded. And there are many scourges um, in uh, in this world. First of them uh, is oblivion. Uh, people are, are lost their uh, people uh, lose uh, their their memories. The, the second is the, the hold. This is a uh, invisible strength. Um, um that um you know uh, transform people and things uh, into other uh, people or other animals um, or vegetables um, uh, and so this is um something close to uh, corruption in the in the world of warmer if you know and you have another scourge that is called uh, egregor this is uh, another invisible um uh, thing that uh, that is formed um, with um, the, the fear, the superstitions, and uh, the emotions of people, and that, that turn it uh, into a um, magical phenomenon. And so, um, if there is a murder in a, in a house, um, the murder the, the, the house uh, became uh, becomes um, a haunted house with poltergeist. Uh, and bleeding walls, uh, something like that. And the uh, the last scourge uh, is called uh, the the horlars. The horlars are are beings that are not uh, not humans, not animals. This is a, a, a new new times, uh, we, uh, new new sort of beings that uh, that have been created uh, after the apocalypse. And um, it um, it asks us questions about uh, our identity, uh, our, about uh, what it is uh, to be human or to be uh, a more of a more alien nature. So that's all for the universe. So in this and this, uh, sorry, this universe, Mill Vales, uh, is that a common thread in all your games? Because I I, I remember just this morning that I got one of your game uh, here, Odyssea, mm. which I still need yeah. to run. <laughs> but and I also remembered uh, because yeah, you know times, uh, life events, and so on. We actually played together, Mill Vales. Uh, I think it was in Florence that we played Camino de Santiago together. Yes. So yes, that's true. <laughs> you forgot <Yeah>. too. <laughs> <laughs> it's recorded. I put a link in the the description of, of the episode. So you're you're very prolific. You've got like thirty or so games, and two of them are available in English, and they are both yeah. set in Millvales. Then, yes. So and those two are Oriente and in Florenza. So, what sort of the difference between the two of them? Uh, there, there are big differences um, in matter of uh, size and gameplay, and uh, this is my, my politics. You know, uh, um, I could have uh, created uh, only one RPG in the same universe with uh, with a lot of rules, a lot of settings, uh, informations, but I, I preferred um, you know cutting into uh, small parts. And uh, one game uh, per uh, per ambience, or, uh, and um, I, I prefer to um, to have a, to propose a, a diversity of gameplays in the same universe. And um, Influenza is quite a, a big game, 
um, it's um, it has a um, it has a gameplay close to to story games, but um, this is still um, uh, this is a, you know just a crossover um, between story games and uh, traditional games um, because um, you you have uh, you have, you have dice to rolls uh, and um, you you can have um, some some scenarios, but um, the, the main game plays um, the, the main game play uh, is um, concentrated uh, in two traits. Your your character sheet uh, is composed uh, with um, with, you, with, um, with traits uh, with the sentences that you write that uh, you know tell the, the story of your character. And uh, this uh, this ten sentences uh, can bring you dice uh, when you uh, enter into conflict. And so it's quite uh, free from. But it's a really ambitious game, um, you know, at the contrary of many story games, because uh, uh, there are something like uh, 20 or 30 uh, scenarios uh, for this game. And um, the, the ambition is uh, to explore um, a folklore in uh, many countries. And so uh, we try to um, try to propose uh, uh, scenarios for many many countries, uh, ranking to uh, Finland, Russia, to um, uh, Corsica, Spain, uh, Greece. Um, uh, we know we, we also have a scenario um, that takes place in uh, contemporary uh, Canada. The scenario is called uh, Hawaii of Tears. And it, um, um, it, uh, it speaks about, um, you know, the disparitions of uh, native people uh, in, um, uh, oh, I, uh, how would you say, Britannic Columbia, that is um, a country in Canada. I think it's called and British so, Columbia. Uh, yeah, go ahead. British Columbia, exactly. So, so we try to explore many countries and, um, Many um, many timelines. Uh, Highway of Tears uh, is taking place, uh, you know, in the um, nowadays. Um, and we have uh, we have a scenario that takes place uh, during the um, Persic Wars in, in the antiquity. Um, and uh, we have also many scenarios that are taking place uh, in a more um, post-apocalyptic uh, era. Does that mean that you you have been in touch or uh, did you engage with people in the, across different countries uh, for for feedback and uh, and uh, to to give you material to inspire you or these or are these mainly based on personal researches? Um, it's most based uh, on personal researches uh, resources. Um, me, uh, uh, I also uh, have the help of uh, many authors. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of uh, scenarios that uh, that has been written by uh, other authors in uh, influenza, and we. Uh, I also try to uh, to work with um, a consultant uh, when writing uh, Highway or Tears because I deal with um, uh, a very touchy uh, subject. Uh, disparitions uh, of native people uh, in Canada and and violence against native people and so um i i um i work with uh, with a consultant uh, a person that um that, that works with natives and uh, i also more recently um uh, i've been this um this scenario um uh, we read um, and uh, reviewed uh, by uh, native people oh great uh did the uh... What's your experience so far? I don't know how recent it is that your two games are available in English. Did you get a lot of uh, engagement and feedback from uh, English-speaking TTRPG fans? Uh, let's say that uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, yeah, of course. We, yeah. Um, mm -mm. we, we made... Um, 
a dozen of actual play uh, with uh, Inforenza in English, uh, trying to connect with uh, the English uh, spoken community uh, around the world. But um, I, I didn't receive so much feedback. Uh, I think the, the reason is simple that um, if you want to connect with uh, RPG playing community uh, uh, around the world, you, you have to you have to be uh, very engaged uh, in um, English spoken uh, communities, and so um, we try we try to make uh, this uh, this dozen of uh, actual plays, and we try to uh, to do uh, the better job uh, that that you could do, but. Um, we uh, I haven't the time, um, and I think I haven't the, you know, uh, the the language quality uh, to engage more into communities, and so uh, I stay focused uh, on French-speaking communities. And I think that uh, that explains why it, uh, I didn't have um, so much feedback, but I still hope so. Um, I haven't some good uh, I, uh, I had some good surprise. Uh, I have another game so that I haven't hasn't been um, translated um, into English. That is called uh, Inferenza Minima. This is some um, you know uh, a simple version of uh, Inferenza, and uh, it is um, it is well played uh, in South Korea. Oh wow, that's cool. Um, Yes, uh, a South Korean, Korean uh, person called Mori uh, discovered um, discovered the game. He uh, translated um, into uh, into uh, Korean, and uh, they, they played uh, they played the game a lot. So that's a good surprise. And uh, you know, today uh, I hope that uh, Orienti could uh, could have um, a more. Um, Substantial um, success because uh, it is a uh, part of a community, the, you know, the fourth drama community, which seems and, quite uh, popular in France. Uh, I've heard of a lot of uh, for the drama hack taking place in yes. France. Even uh, our friends at Wad Altarid uh, made a special 100 episode anniversary for the drama game, mm -hmm. which I didn't mm -hmm. listen to yet. Yes. For the drama is a, is a platform um, with a lot of uh, games that are descended by the Queen, and uh, there are many of them uh, translated in, into English. Um, and so I think that um, for the drama is um, a popular platform, even uh, even in a, in wide world uh, for English speaking gamers. And so, as a part of this uh, platform, maybe Orienti could have uh, some success. Yeah, that's that's all I wish. It's uh, it's quite cool that to see your game taken uh, by an individual uh, in a place like Korea. Uh, a few episodes ago, we had a uh, Guillaume Gentil, uh, who had the same sort of story, but with with Japan. Uh, do, do you think it's because, I don't know, this? it seems to be a special relationship between uh, in um, uh, countries like Japan, China, and Korea, and, and France. France got this sort of soft power and projection of, of culture. Do you think there's, there's an appeal uh, that creates an appeal of communities there to, to be interested in French role-playing games? Or do you think it's just totally random in your case? Uh, I think this is part random and uh, just, um, you know, uh, uh, Maury made some searches with uh, Google Translator. And so um, it is uh, only by chance that he discovered Influenza Minima. And after he just uh, discovered, uh, you know, a shared uh, sensibility. Uh, so, um, and so, so he played the game because, uh, because it was connected to, to his own uh, gaming sensibility. And um, I think we live in an exciting moment, um, you know, uh, um, in, into the world, uh, just because like platforms like uh, Ichayo, I think that uh, people from all over the world are interesting them um, to the game from other countries. 
and uh, you know in France, uh, uh, thanks to Richio, we we are paying attention to uh, to games uh, coming from uh, South Asia, by instance. And uh, I think uh, the, the opposite is also true. Uh, so people uh, people from Asia uh, can, can have a look uh, to French productions, but. Um, Translating uh, into English uh, is still the things to, thing to do to, uh, to make connection uh, between people uh, uh, through all over the world. And so, uh, so I put uh, Influenza and Orienti uh, in Shio. Yeah. I hope that uh, that will be, um, you know, a new chance to connect more with people around the world and and sharing. Um, the patient to uh, to make a role playing game uh, into a dark uh, forest mood. Yeah, well, you can compete with uh, Simba Room this way in a in a very different uh, manner and uh, and tone. Huh? Yes, you we, but you also have um, forest uh, RPG is. Uh, uh, written by, uh, by by people from uh, South Asia, uh, that are really really interesting. Uh, and uh, folk horror is the uh, is the focus of my games, and and I pay a big interest uh, to uh, you know to uh, forest folklore from all over the world, uh, all, all over the world. And so I try to uh, to get inspiration from this uh, this coming game from South Asia and other countries, uh, and also for folklore, uh, uh, you know, uh, from uh, Siberian shamanism, uh, on uh, even um, I also uh, love uh, you know the Japan uh, bakemonos. Um, mm, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, Japanese yeah. folklore is uh, very inspiring uh, to uh, to put. Um, you know, uh, folk horror mood. Yeah, the Japanese forest got, I mean, they, it's such a, I mean, all countries got very rich culture. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Japan. I think both you and me, uh, we, we grew up in the 80s in uh, French speaking environments. Japan had a very big place to, to all childhood. So there's a lot of, of stuff there, which definitely fascinates us. Uh, uh, from those countries. Since you bring up Southeast Asia, I don't resist uh, for our viewers to mention, uh, recommend to check uh, Session Zero, which is a Southeast Asia convention, which is online and open to everyone, but specifically made to showcase uh, games from Southeast Asia. And since a lot of different nations are concerned in Southeast Asia, they use English as their vehicular language. So as English users, you can uh, definitely uh, uh, attend the convention and discover uh, uh, the, the lot of amazing stuff going on under the hashtag RPG, SEA, RPG, uh, C. Uh, speaking of convention, I'm trying to motivate French uh, authors and RPG enthusiasts to go to Draconis online to run some games. Uh, is this something you you would consider doing? So it's it's in Quebec, so it's it's in French. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, mm -mm. Well, you, you should get uh, get in touch uh, for that. Yes. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'll send you a That's link. A good idea. The the signups are open for for game masters to offer a game, so uh, I'll send you a, a link to that. Um, so. I was wondering, are you interested to, because uh, the English audience might not be aware of that, but uh, you are mentioned quite often when tabletop role-playing games are discussed in France, uh, as far as I can tell. Uh, you have an interest in uh, in game design and, and game theory. Uh, would you like to talk a, a bit about that? Okay, uh, why not? Um, <laughs> I'm I just throwing this uh, out there. Like... <laughs> yeah, um, but maybe just uh, in order to, to conclude the first yes. part, um, could I uh, just um, speak uh, other words about uh, Orienti? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, uh, it, that's okay. your show. So, yeah. So Orienti is um, descended by the Queen game that takes place uh, in the forest of Maisvale. 
And so it's a very good introduction to Miles' universe because uh, you have it uh, focused here just into um, uh, 75 uh, cards game. So it's quite simple uh, to have a, a first look at the universe and you uh, you follow a, a guide uh, you, you follow a guide uh, into the forest uh, a guide called uh, orient and this is a game about um, you know how can you trust a person to um, to to lead to uh, to show you the good way and so uh, all the game is focused on um, you know uh, testing, testing trust, uh, and trying to know uh, to figure out uh, if uh, Orient is a good or a bad guide, and and so uh, it um, uh, it shows you uh, an ambience of uh, of trip. Sometimes uh, with uh, with down times, uh, with um, you know small talks uh, around the around the, the fire camp. And sometimes with uh, danger moments, uh, with monsters of the forest and uh, and all the traps uh, that uh, that can uh, that, that, that can await you uh, in the way. Uh, and so, uh, I, I try to to make uh, indeed by, uh, by the queen that I have a good replay value, um, because uh, for the queen is uh, I think it's one of the best games of the decades. But it only has, um, you know, 40, 40 cards, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so you can, you, you can't play so, so, so many times. Uh, um, at a certain moment, uh, you know, the, the cards uh, are not sufficient. So you, you can, uh, and, and so, uh, so um, you, you have to, to write uh, other cards or you have to create a new descended by the queen. And so uh, I decided to, to make uh, a more a bigger game with uh, 75 cards. And I also uh, made another game taking place uh, in Miles Vale that is called uh, Nervure. It is uh, in French for, uh, for the moment. And uh, Nervure is, uh, you know, a big descended by the queen with uh, 150 cards and many, many um, informations. You, you have, uh, you have uh, 11 uh, information uh, by card and a portrait on the verso. And so you can, um, the game uh, is still, you know, uh, descended by the queen uh, in, the, in the way, but uh, it has a lot, a lot more of, uh, of replay value. Uh, okay, that's for Orienti. Well, continue. So you, you... Okay, sorry, go ahead. Okay. So if you want to, you can ask about uh, game theory. Well, uh, actually, yeah, we, we can go to game theory, but uh, I had a question about Orienti and, and for the Queen. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering what you were thinking of. It seems to me that uh, using gaming heads, cards, uh, which are custom, and, uh, you know, having this kind of gap between board games and story games and role-playing games, uh, it's kind of being uh, connected at the moment by by a lot of games, including a game that I'm designing. Uh, I was wondering what what you thought of that this this sort of appeal of having uh, even if it's online, uh, yeah, physical tools, things to hand over and pass over or pick from uh, to structure a story game, which started a lot as free form. So I find it very interesting that we we going towards using a lot of, of these things to sort of, yeah, board gamify uh, story games. Mm. Uh, I think that, uh, yeah, board gamifying story games um, could have bad aspects uh, because you, you could have, um, you know, uh, uh, a game that's very heavy and uh, complicating. Uh, I, I'm thinking... Um, <laughs> You know, I have uh, Warmer um, in, uh, in, in mind, you know, with, uh, with this uh, edition of uh, the uh, RPG Warmer just looking like uh, a very trash game. And it's not, um, it's not my, my favorite uh, kind of, um, you know, board game uh, RPG. 
I, I prefer I, I, I prefer RPG that uh, that, um, that uh, use uh, gaming aids in order to facilitate the game and not uh, add compl complexity. And I have um, I'd love to uh, to test uh, you know the the, the recent uh, Escape Tales. Uh, games that are mixed uh, between escape uh, escape game uh, in a, in a board game and um, more narrative stuff. Just uh, um, it looks like the you know mix between escape games uh, um, and uh, adventure um, ah, adventure book. Uh, what do you say? A livre d'où êtes-le? Ah, it's a fighting fantasy. Choose your own, uh, choose your own adventure. Yeah. Game, uh, yes, and, and a mix. Uh, um, I, I think that I've, um, Vincent Baker did a great job with uh, Portergeist, uh, Murderous Ghost in English, uh, that is uh, a mix between card games and uh, choose your own adventure games uh, and includes a wheel or RPG um, pieces into it. And it's, it's funny that gaming, you. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Gaming aids uh, like uh, cards, um, um, you, you, it permits you to, to bring uh, information uh, easier into game. And um, for instance, I'm I work into um, I, I am uh, try, I, I am um, creating a game that is called um, Echevel, and uh, this is um, you know uh, this is a game card. And each card um, is a, a NPC plus um, a place uh, where this uh, NPC uh, is lurking. And uh, you, you, you have uh, something like uh, more 100 cards. And all, of our, uh, all these cards are connected. The NPC is uh, connected to other NPCs and to other place, and the place is also connected to other NPCs and other place. And uh, you can, uh, you know, you can play without reading the cards in advance. You just have to pick a card. Okay, that is the first NPC that you encounter uh, in this place, and um, the card uh, told you um, what type of scenes uh, could take place. And uh, you you just um, you you just have to uh, you know play like uh, like a normal uh, TRPG, and um, you just have to follow the links be, uh, between people and places, and and playing on and on without uh, reading cards in advance. And so um, that's fantastic because you have uh, you have a scenario that you you don't have to to read. You just have to play it. This is uh, really, uh, this, um, you know, the, the new generation of um, pick and play uh, RPGs. Interesting. It's funny when you uh, when we mention board game. It's just it, it's it's interesting uh, what we associate with terms, because when I was mentioning story games and board games, so one might argue whether or not they are board games. I was more thinking. Stuff like uh, Dixit, Werewolf, Skulls and Roses, or even something like uh, something I'm not a fan of. Um, what is it called? Cards Against Humanity. These are these are definitely stuff you find in the board game, the the gaming section of a, a game shop or or a gaming cafe. And uh, and the, there's a there's a lot of when you take something like for the drama. Uh, the gap between those i mean i'm not even sure if there's a gap of they jumped over one another because for the drama sounds like i haven't played it yet but it sounds like it already crossed its way towards werewolf and so on in terms of the type of audience you could attract with that and the, the format of the game as opposed to a, a risk or a warhammer or or even a, a cluedo mm -hmm. with a board and rooms and so on Yeah, for, for, uh, for the Queen is more of a beer and bread cell games. Uh, it, re it really has its place uh, in this type of games. And uh, it's amazing uh, that you, you can pick the, 
could pick the game in your pocket and play uh, in uh, any place you, you want. Uh, and uh, I try to, um, you know, I try to do uh, the, the same type of job with uh, Orienti and uh, Nervure and, and Echevey. And um, I think the, the, uh, the other future of, um, you know, <laughs> uh, board gamified uh, um, RPG, uh, the, the future is uh, in the net and in, uh, you know, gaming apps. Um, for the drama is a, is a good instance. Uh, the, the other instance is uh, Chartopia. Chartopia, this is a website with uh, a lot of um, random tables, random chats. Oh, cool. And, uh, and yeah, and so um, I, I put, uh, I put uh, is uh, in this website. And so I, I made a collection and so uh, when you go to Chartopia, uh, Chartopia's collection uh, called Nervure, so you have uh, many random tables, a random uh, a tab a chart that is, um, uh, you know, resolution system. Uh, you, you, you have a cre for the drama like uh, questions uh, and uh, you have places, you have uh, monsters uh, uh, and you have, so you have piece of uh, setting and piece of gameplays uh, put into um, an app. And so uh, you just have to, you, you just have to bring your smartphone and you have a, just a unique place to, uh, for, for, for the crunch, for the fluff, for the, um, I made, uh, you know, uh, name, gener gen name generators, uh, portraits uh, generators, uh, music generators. So, um, because you can, um, I, I made a huge, huge playlist for, for my Vales. Excellent. And, uh, I'm trying to put them uh, in uh, in Chartopia, so that's very nice. Uh, you 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 take uh, your your smartphone and you just um, you know pick up a random music. Um, you have a short description of the of the ambience, and uh, you have just uh, to to uh, to let you inspired by the music and playing uh, and role playing. Yeah, so that sounds cool. Like. Instead of taking the image, you, you take the song and see, oh, it, it inspires stuff. I I had an idea recently of trying to do that because I, I was thinking of, it, it was because of, uh, I don't know how much you, you, I, you participated because I didn't meet you there uh, to CyberConf, but I had a, a panel about time travel. And because of that, I was thinking again about uh, Groundhog Day, uh, with Bill Murray or um, was it called a uh, Russian doll uh, on Netflix and I was trying to picture or you could make a story game a role-playing game inspired by that and I thought that the music was actually quite important because each time they reset you've got the I got you babe or you've got uh, gotta get up uh, for for uh, Russian doll so uh, it would be it would be interesting to have yeah games like that with with music really integrated in the design and if you do it online uh it's much easier because because everybody's already around a computer you don't need a an ipod or or, or whatever uh well, what did you think of the moving online because uh, well uh, you were running games online uh, before the the pandemic we, that's how we played together uh, have you been playing more of that? Uh, do you have any observation about yeah wh what it means for for you and the, the friends you play with? Uh, I think uh, this this, uh, this year will be definitely uh, a revolution for online gaming uh, because a lot uh, a lot of people uh, have joined uh, the, the online community just because of uh, the pandemics. Uh, I think we we have new uh, game design territories to explore um, this way uh, because a lot of things uh, uh, already uh, have been uh, already made uh, with online game design. But we we call, we, we have uh, also some space new spaces to discover and um, what um, you know. Uh, for for instance, uh, I'm really excited by uh, online uh, LARP. Yeah, that sounds exciting. And, um, 
I need to try that. Right. Just you, you um, put uh, you, um, figure out. You, you put a, a Discord uh, channel. A Discord. You 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 create a Discord server, and um, when you when you play uh, online RPG, you are created only when um, you know um, vocal um, vocal chat. But you can play uh, using um, many, many, many more uh, vocal chats, and so you can make uh, you can make a LARP uh, involving uh, uh, 10, 20, uh, 30, 40 persons, uh, maybe more. And you just have to um, to put a lot of uh, vocal chats uh, in each uh, each vocal chat is a place in the game. So uh, this is the chat, the castle. This is the chat, the garden. This is the chat, the swamp. And uh, when your character is um, moving from a, a place to another, it's just uh, the gamer is uh, is moving to uh, to a chat to another, and so you 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 don't have uh, you know a, a god view on the game. Mm -hmm. You just have a, you you just know what what takes place in a, um, you know in the in the locus uh, where when you're playing and so interest it is very interesting because uh, things are going on in your back when you're while playing in the swamp and uh, maybe uh, your your foes are, are plotting against you uh, in the castle and so it is very very exciting you can put um, you can musical bots in the lockers you can put pictures to to make this place living maybe you um, you you can uh, match this with uh, uh, rpg uh, using uh, i know uh, games like row but you uh, world of warcraft but you you can also use uh, you know uh, uh, platforms like uh, gather gather it this is um, online chat platform that use um, RPG map and you have a little uh, avatar that you uh, that is um, moving from a place to another and moving for, for, from a vocal chat to another. And so there are very big perspective uh, uh, involving uh, uh, online LARP. It's interesting because, you know, the first time I saw a mention of uh, online LARPs, uh, I was really wondering, well, if it's online and it's a live action role playing game, but online, well, how different is that from a table, playing a tabletop role playing game online? And, and actually that point of having no one really with a gods, uh, what, what did you call that? Uh, I forgot my words. Uh, God point of view, a god like point a of view, yes, a god view yeah. over everything that is going on, like a, a game master mm -hmm. would, or even if you play a GM less role playing game, everybody in the room is always together, so there's always this mm -hmm. god view over everything. But it's true when you're talking about a LARP in a physical environment or online, mm -hmm. what happens is that suddenly you, you split that and you everybody involved only have a fraction of the experience because it's not possible to follow several discord mm -hmm. chats yeah. at the same time and so on that's quite yes. fascinating and there's another interesting difference um, between uh, online larp and online rpg the difference is uh, when in rpg your focus um, you focus uh, on interaction between uh, pc and and pcs between pcs and places and in online labs, you 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 focus on interaction between pieces, and uh, you put emphasis on dialogues, and uh, you know uh, very um, very simple interactions uh, between uh, between pieces, and uh, the focus is very different. There is no NPCs, um, you know, in online lab, uh, so it's a it's a very uh, it's a new new kind of game. Uh, even uh, even if you have uh, very ancient uh, online LARPs, uh, like um, in the island, uh, an island in Sea of Solitude by PH Lee or View Scream, that is a uh, you know uh, um, SF LARP uh, that you play with web webcams. Uh, you, I believe you you do quite a lot of in-person LARPs uh, as well. Uh, 
I, I really believe Tibo's roping game will be significantly influenced by what is going on online now. Uh, do you think there are, there are already ideas or stuff which happen in online labs which might uh, bleed into the, the physical version of, of labs? Uh, I don't know, but um, I do think that uh, online labs um, could have uh, an influence into, uh, you know, real life uh, RPGs. Mm -hmm. Because you can uh, you can put the um, uh, um, you, if you if you can play uh, fraction and games uh, into uh, into small uh, vocal chats, you can also uh, you know uh, cut um, uh, RPG table into uh, uh, several 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 tables, and um, and so you. Uh, you just figure out you're in a, in a con, uh, you know, you're, you're in a real life convention, maybe one day, we, uh, <laughs> so, so, some, something like that will happen. Hopefully. <laughs> so, fig <laughs> so figure out a real life convention and um, you can play a big RPG session uh, involving, uh, for instance, uh, a dozen of tables. Each table is a place, the forest, the castle, the swamp, the garden, and when you change, um, when, when you when you change, uh, when you move from a place to another, you move from a table to another. Um, but it's only pos uh, it's possible if you put uh, a GM per table. Mm -hmm. But you also play, um, you know, you 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 can also play GMLS games with uh, with this concept. Um, and so uh, I, I use a personal, um, I, I use a, a LARP that I wrote that is called uh, Les Santes, uh, that permits to uh, to play, uh, you know, GM, GM less game uh, uh, for 60 persons. Sixty percent of what? Sixty? No, sixty. Sixty people. Sixty. Persons. Ah, okay. <laughs> So you can uh, you can make a, a big RPG session uh, uh, involving uh, 60, uh, 60 pieces uh, playing uh, and moving uh, from a table to another, and uh, each PC has his um, you know uh, um, world play objective that he uh, and um, you know he, he has to to play uh, play his objectives uh, in total autonomy. Wow, so you combine that in the West, West Marshes uh, type of campaign and you can even have different systems. you got a room, if you go out, I don't know, in the, the Coliseum, that's where fights happen and you use 4th edition and then you come back in the, in the city and there you play. I mean, you could have the, even the inn and in the inn you play, you are in an inn, the, the, the game. Exactly. You could change, switch shifts them uh, depending on locations. It really reminds me fantasies I had about video games when I was a kid. I was picturing a uh, overreaching game. I guess it's kind of GTA now, but uh, you would switch between games as you are in different situations and places in in that uh, that virtual world, which was not a virtual world yet, but you could drive a car and you would have a, a racing game uh, you you'd enter a bar have a fight and uh, you would have a, a street fighter game uh, and so on um, have some craft uh, uh, etc cool uh you so you got oriente and of influenza in english already do you have any plans already or what could be your third game in english or at, at the moment you mainly concentrate on promoting those ones which which is already a a, a big big piece of work mm, i concentrate on uh, french written books but um anybody can um can can propose uh, uh, their service to to translate one of my games uh, from French to to English. Uh, any initiative uh, is really welcome, and um, or know, Spanish or what, Korean uh, what, or whatever. Language. Yes, uh, in any language where you want. You know, my, my my games are in public domain, and so you 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 can make a translation uh, without uh, asking me permission. Oh wow! I was not aware of that. 
and that's quite what happened uh, with uh, influenza and Orienti. Uh, uh, that was two folks, uh, Co Martin for uh, influenza and, and um, Mathieu B for Orienti that, uh, that asked me to uh, uh, to translate the, the game into uh, into English. Uh, if I uh, if I had uh, another game to uh, to being to be translated, um, I think that I. I I should put my choice on uh, Nerver because uh, this is a kind of small games, but uh, he has, um, you know, a big replay level value, and so um, he, he could uh, he could touch uh, a worldwide uh, interest. Uh, but um, you know, the, the ball is in the. Um, I, I'm not. Um, Ah, each in initiative is welcome, and so if uh, if, if somebody is wanted, uh, if somebody prefers to translate, uh, you know, a more um, um, obscure game uh, uh, like uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Odyssey, uh, which is one of my game. Uh, it should any any yeah. in initiative is welcome. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna try to play it first. Finally, I mean, I keep I keep saying I'm gonna play it. I, I even emailed you about that. At some point, I even had the the big project of uh, at the beginning of my show when I was doing a lot of crazy idea. Well, uh, crazy ideas. Uh, I wanted to run it at the British Museum because you got some common places where you you can do whatever you want. So I was like, oh, I could play there, which would have been a horrendous experience actually because those Common areas are extremely noisy, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> just for for the kick of saying, "Yeah, I'm playing that uh, at the British Museum, just uh, across uh, from um, pieces of the party and which got stolen." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about French then? Uh, what's what are your projects at the moment? Uh, I try to focus us uh, focus on uh, finishing my games because uh, I have something like uh, seventeen books in progress, and um, and so um, today I am um, a non-profit uh, game designer. Uh, I, I made uh, non-profit uh, games uh, for five years, and I try to do it. Uh, Two years more, uh, and after I, I would try to to have a more uh, you know profit uh, career <laughs> uh, because uh, I have a family to <laughs> we all, we to do take yeah. care of, mm -mm -mm. and so um, I, I will try to uh, to finish uh, the, the more books I, I can uh, during this uh, this last uh, non profit uh, two years and. Um, this time uh, I am finishing uh, a book that is called uh, Marche Branche, so Work Branch in English. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. That is a this is a mice uh, fantasy RPG uh, inspired uh, from the um, you know uh, Wars, Warsar and Shore Dream um, wave. Oh, cool. And so you play uh, amnesic pilgrims um, crossing um, uh, crossing uh, a, f uh, a forest uh, that has raised um, upon a fallen empire, and you do quest uh, you do quest uh, in order to um, to recover your your lost memories. So does that mean it's so time to hit things with an axe? in Millvales and gain some XP to level up? Uh, it is more, you know, this is a more uh, care wave game uh, than my others. And so uh, uh, killing uh, killing adversaries is, uh, is not the, the better um, solution because uh, if, you, um, if you kill a human, an animal or a monster, uh, you you get um, you get some corruption and so your uh, you you can uh, you can become an NPC and so you have to 
you have to find the creative solutions in order to fix problems and um, accomplish quests uh, without killing. But when you say OSR, do you mean uh, sort of OSR systems or OSR vibe, uh, like the five attributes? And I'm not the most OSR aware person. Mm -hmm. My understanding okay. is that it's it's kind of, uh, it's more, yeah. It, first of all, I, I found out that OSR was at first at least strictly inspired by D&D &D and not all the old school role playing yeah. games. Like I told, at first, at first I told like, okay, so if I run Star Wars D6, that's o OSR, right? Because it's an old school game for me, at least it, it was, but actually it's, no. it's more D&D, &D, first D&D &D focus thing. So uh, mm -hmm. how do you connect with that sort of influence and material, which which is quite uh, a, a part, if not even somewhat antagonist, antagonistic to, to your approach to uh, Miles Vales uh, so far? So mm -hmm. uh, OSR is a very diverse uh, gaming wave, uh, ranking from, um, you know, just playing all models of uh, with all Dungeons and Dragons um, to playing uh, all the 70s and 80s games or to playing games inspired by uh, original Dungeons and Dragons, but developing uh, new sorts of game design. Uh, if you have uh, Into the Odd uh, or Makato Monsters in mind, uh, you can see that these games have uh, an original Dungeons and Dragons flavors, mm -hmm. but their game design is fairly different. And um, and so is the Marche Branche game design. This is inspired um, this is, uh, by original the Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, you have a Dungeons flavor, but the game design is quite modern. Um, it's a very freeform game. And so you... Uh, you are just uh, rolling the, the dice uh, a few a few times per per session per game, and uh, you 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 have to resolve uh, a lot of situation just using role play. Exciting. But uh, I try to to maintain uh, you know a very old school flavor, uh, so there are uh, character class and character levels. But, um, you know, um, I try to make a game that seems like, uh, oh, just put, uh, just, just figure that uh, Miyazaki uh, created a, a game, uh, a role-playing game in the, in, in the 70s. Okay, cool. Yeah, sounds interesting. You started playtesting already that? Are you that far in, uh, in that development? Uh, we we made uh, something like uh, thirty of uh, or forty playtests, so oh, wow. the game is uh, the game is solid. Cool. And uh, and um, um, I, I I put my um, you know my work in progress and Ashcan versions in the web, and so, um, so some people have also run uh, run their their own campaigns. So I I, I had a lot of feedback uh, on this game. And so uh, I am just on the on the last um, step for writing the game. I'm just at this point with my own game. I'm I'm very excited about the idea. I'm looking for for people to run it without my intervention, without me being around to explain how it works. I'm very curious to to get people to start doing that and get feedback from that. Uh, did you get any uh, surprising feedback about uh, um, Marche Branche? Uh, Marche Branche is a, is a game based uh, uh, on many random charts. And so um, it, it permits to have a very close flavor from uh, my tables, uh, between my table and between the, the playtesters table. And so uh, the, the ambience, uh, uh, the, the mood is quite uh, quite the same. Uh, but um, 
uh, it's uh, we, uh, I also see uh, some uh, some play testers develop their own vision, their or um, they appropriate the uh, the universe, and so I think this is a very uh, uh, I, I, I take it as a reward because, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, I write game, I, I try to write game um, with, uh, with a strong game design, so I'm kind of, you know, a system does matter offer, but I also try to, um, to put uh, big spaces of creativity for the table, and so um, uh, it's uh, I like the I like the table to appropriate the game and make make it uh, his own. Awesome. Well, we are close from the one hour mark. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to to talk about, Thomas? Okay, just one minute about uh, game theory. Yeah, uh, one minute. We, we, we the at <laughs> the, atom we the, the atomistic in yes. one minute. So I'm going to translate that and export uh, yeah, it. The atomistic in it. one minute. <laughs> uh, atomistic, you know, it's a kind of uh, revamping the, the old uh, uh, GNS model. And uh, this is a theory that, um, you know, a game uh, is divided uh, in four atoms, four rays of gaming uh, that are tactical game, uh, moral game, uh, aesthetic game, and social game. And uh, I think that, uh, that a game is just a mix between these four moods. And um, when you're a game designer, you, I think you, 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 have, uh, you, you are invited to, um, uh, to include the, these four moods in your game, but you have to, um, you, you have to think about uh, how they, they interact and maybe uh, try to uh, just uh, like when you create a perfume uh, you have to um, you, are, you you have to uh, to to put the, the first note the middle note and uh, the final note and uh, you have to um, to try to uh, making interact uh, uh, the moods uh, in a, in a perfect synergy Synergy. It's a good comparison. I never heard that one, the, the comparison with perfume. Because you, you're right, often when those things are discussed, people have the knee-jerk reaction of separating them in corners, uh, while they, they need to cohabit. They're supposed to work in parallel. It's about how you balance them and what's your, your favorite balance of fragrances, I guess. I think you... You can you can uh, create more specialized game. Of but, course, uh, yeah. Uh, putting the four moods together is a good way to make uh, you know inclusive game design. Uh, make game design that uh, will reach interests of uh, uh, many people. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I need to. I, I want someday maybe try to to go deeper into that and maybe make a French translation, but I lately I've been talking a lot of the, the layers of gaming, which is something which was discussed on Misdirected Mark and they, and yeah. more recently on Pandas Talking Game, but they never quite... They brought up the idea, but they never quite delved really deep in it. I, it doesn't feel like... I should check that they never made a blog post about it, they just discussed it on, on the podcast, which is very interesting, but there's a lot of gaps and things which don't quite work, but uh, that's uh, that's another thing. I, I'm bringing that up because I was discussing it with Tapis Virginia at CyberConf, mm. and he was comparing the two, the atomistic and the, the layers of gaming. And on one hand, it was interesting. On the other hand, I think the, the two theories are sort of talking about different stuff and they, they're not supposed to be yes. merged with one they're, another. They are compatible. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Great. Well, uh, any chances you will translate back, you know, taking your atomistic back to the language of Nicole Lazaro, and, which is English, uh, have the atomistic in, in English uh, one day uh, on your website? Uh, but if uh, if somebody um, if somebody is able to translate it, um, uh, I, I would be happy. <laughs> So, so I'm just waiting about uh, some helpers because my 
you know, my English is too bad, so I can't make a translation by, by myself. Well, if there are any volunteers uh, out there, we got Richard from the D20 Future Show. Oh, we got a few more people who joined towards the end. So if there are any volunteers there for some French to English translation, uh, that would be much welcome. Uh, thanks so much, Thomas, for joining us today. Uh, where can people find you when you wish to be found? Ma for the English community, I think the, the best solution is uh, is to use uh, my itch.io page. But for French community, you can go to my website that is called uh, Outsider Heart Point Blog. Great, and I will include a link to your each of your game uh, on itch. Uh, in the description of the episode so it's easy for people to find uh, people watching us on Twitch please remember to follow the channel uh, the more of you uh, who subscribe or whatever the, the better it is for the channel I'm terrible with Twitch but it's good so follow us uh, if you're watching this afterwards on uh, maybe YouTube please leave a like a comment subscribe this sort of things uh, really help and uh, yeah, go definitely check uh, the excellent work uh, of Thomas so, so he can uh, have even more out for us uh, in, uh, in English. And uh, when you do so, le le leave uh, Thomas uh, a little feedback and uh, I will get around to finally uh, running Odyssey at some point. Maybe I will, I will run it uh, at the gauntlet or something. Uh, all right. Nice. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, bye, everyone. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, non-believing person. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.